we feed about 7,000 head of cattle at one feedlot and 11,000 head at the other. The livestock aspect of no-till is, is a wonderful thing. And we have, because we have the feedlot, I'll swath or hay off a cover crop or chop it off and then feed it in the feedlot and then I, I put the manure back anyway. I just haven't compacted my soil with, uh, with cattle. Um, I've actually so, uh, water tested and had the samples sent to McCook, Nebraska. And uh, water coming off of my no-till and water coming off of some of my neighbor's places. And our settling ponds at the feedlot actually have less nitrogen in them than the water coming out of the field that is tilled every year. This is something about pollution when runoff, cattle or feedlot runoff ponds are cleaner than the water coming out of the end of your field. Now I hate to tell everybody that, but when they're putting that much fertilizer on every year and they irrigate that much, it's gotta go somewhere. But now we've noticed since we've no-tilled and started planting cover crops and things like that, our nitrogen use has really went down. I would say 30%, maybe more. You don't notice it the first year right off the bat, but your second and third year soil samples will show considerably more nitrogen. The cocktail we used to have to use before no-till was incredible. I mean, we use so much chemical. I think there's five or six different chemicals you used in sugar beets, two or three in corn. We still use quite a few in uh, malt barley, and that isn't, that's our only non-GMO crop. I mean, we don't want Roundup Ready everything. That's why we use barley, is to kind of give the weeds a taste of something else. Some of our newer technology and fertilizers also helped. Agritain, things like that. People think, well, you can't just put your, how do you work your fertilizer in? How do you work your fertilizer in? And uh, I just put it on top. Uh, they're saying, well, you're gonna lose such a percent. And if that's the case, I'm saving it somewhere else because my soil samples don't show any deficiencies. My crops don't show any deficiencies. We've done soil sampling forever. Since we've started no-tilling, you know, our soil organic matter has went from a little over two to almost three and a half percent. I interplant soybeans into my corn silage. I mainly just do it for soil health, put nitrogen back into the soil and things like that, but uh, I get a, about three to four percent bump on my protein in my corn silage because of it. And the pro I figure about two tons per acre is what I'm getting out of it. The soybeans will actually get about eight feet tall inside the corn because they, they just reach for the sun. The leaves get about as big as your hand. It was such a nice fall. Most of the beans went to, uh, they did pod. The, I think that really gave me the protein bump, but took some nitrogen back. Cause I've been getting about 60 units of nit free nitrogen. And uh, last year I only got about 40. So I think they used a little of their own nitrogen to, to put on pods. But I got the protein out of it and protein's in our most expensive feed. So that's really why I'm doing it. The corn salad smells a little different, and it, it's a little darker color. Uh, it's a little wetter, so you maybe you want to plant a, uh, a shorter day variety of corn that may dry out just a little more so you can soak up some of that water a little bit, but uh, it's not terribly wetter. It might be two or three percent wetter. Mm -hmm.